So I want to let you into my world of brain surgery. I want to tell you about a surgery I did recently uh, of a brain tumor that was in a really dangerous location. And what was dangerous about it was it was right by an area of the brain called the motor cortex, which is in charge of our strength. So you got to be careful not to injure that area or you can end up paralyzing someone. And I want to show you exactly where that was using a model in a moment. But to start with, I wanted to show you, you know, how, how does a neurosurgeon gain access to resect the tumor like that? So let me explain things to you. First step before you even get to surgery is to get MRI imaging of the brain to find the brain tumor and its location. Now this brain tumor um, was about three centimeters in size, but it was very close and right next to the area of the brain that controls strength. So prior to surgery, we did what's called a functional MRI. And what happens is they have the patient like tap her fingers. And then you can see on the MRI where that part of the brain lights up. And by doing that, the MRI shows me exactly where the motor cortex or that part of the brain that controls movement is. And so on this particular MRI, the tumor was right abutting and pushing the part of the brain that controls strength backwards. So it was right next to that area. Once we have that information, then what I do is at the time of surgery, I use something called the stealth neuro navigational system. So it's based upon what's called a stealth MRI, but at the time of surgery, I can localize down to the millimeter where I am on the surface of the scalp, the skull, or in the brain. So it's a navigational system that helps guide us to where the tumor is and where you want to be. Then once the patient is asleep at surgery, I position the patient with her forehead facing upward and I locked her head into a clamp device called a Mayfield, which holds the head perfectly still so it can't move. After I make the skin incision, then I reflect the scalp and I expose the skull. Then once again, I use the navigational system to map out the exact confines of the tumor on the skull, as well as important uh, venous structures, important vascular structures in the brain, so I know exactly where midline is. Next, I place burr holes, which are holes through the skull, which I used to use a saw type of uh, device to take the bone off. And so I took, the, I took a rectangular piece of bone off of the skull, which was overlying the tumor. Once the bone is off, then I open the covering of the brain using a little pair of scissors and I reflect that covering of the brain to the side. And now I'm looking at the brain. You have to be very careful when you're reflecting the covering of the brain because sometimes there are veins attached to it that can tear. And so you have to make sure you don't tear one of those veins or you get, get into a lot of bleeding quickly. Also, there's a large vein in the center called the sagittal sinus that is a high flow of blood going through there and if you cut into that, you can have massive blood loss. Once I'm looking at the brain, the tumor's not clearly obvious, and so we use a navigational system, which is accurate down to a millimeter, to again, map out that tumor on the brain surface. And then from there, you know, I can kind of see that the brain in front of the tumor was more of a whitish color, and maybe behind it was a little more gray. And so that's my starting point. I try to get that plane between the normal brain and tumor and dissect down around that. And that's kind of how we resect the tumor in a way. We're trying to f always find that plane between normal brain and abnormal brain. I also enter the middle of the tumor and take multiple specimens. I send these to the pathologist and then during surgery, he will call in and give me a preliminary report. Um, he did say we had abnormal tissue and indeed he said it was a tumor. Then I basically will debulk some of the tumor from the inside out and then also help continue to define that plane around the tumor. And what I'm really looking for again is that normal brain tumor interface. And as I did this, you know, as you get into bleeding, we use a, what's called a bipolar instrument, which helps cauterize blood vessels to stop the bleeding. And, you know, really it's amazing how when you get to the end of the tumor and you get all of the tumor out, the bleeding just stops. Because usually the blood flow to a tumor comes from its deepest part. So once you get to the deepest part of the tumor and get that resected, usually the bleeding stops. Now, most importantly in this case was back by the motor cortex, right? The part of the brain that controls strength. The tumor was abutting this area, and so I had to be very careful when I resect the tumor back by the motor cortex. To better show you what I mean by the motor cortex, let me use a model of the brain here to explain this. So let me show you some anatomy of the brain just to get you oriented. So this is the brain, um, a model of it, obviously. This is the right side of the brain. This is the frontal lobe right here. This blue stripe that you see here, that's called the motor cortex. So that's the part of the brain that controls the strength for our face, our arm and legs. And then directly behind that, this pinkish orange, that's the sensory cortex. 
that helps us feel um, touch on our body. Now, remember, the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body in the majority of the people. So the tumor that I had the other day, if you outlined it on the brain, it was probably right about here. And what, what it was, it was pushing the motor cortex back, so it was right up adjacent to the motor cortex. It came a little bit to the surface, but it went down about that deep into the brain, so it went down quite a bit. And so when I'm in here doing surgery, I'm using the navigational device to help me kind of look at the confines of this. But a lot of this is just um, knowing your anatomy. There are some structures on the, on the skull that I use as landmarks so I can kind of confirm where I am. And then what I do is I'm dissecting down um, around this tumor. You're trying to find a, a border where there's normal brain and then abnormal looking brain. So normal brain is more of a whitish color. The abnormal looking brain was more of a grayish reddish color. And what I do is I just follow that margin all the way around and I resect that tumor inside from the inside out. And then basically I just keep going until I see normal brain all the way around. Now, back by the motor cortex here, I gotta be careful. If I go too far, I'll paralyze this person and they won't be able to move their left arm or left leg ever again. So I have to be very careful when I'm back here not to injure that. And so I, I, I don't get too aggressive back here. In addition, there's a large vein called the sagittal sinus that is right here, and I'm working in that area, so I have to be very careful because if you hurt that sagittal sinus, you can get uncontrollable bleeding at surgery. But this is where the tumor was, right here. Overall, the tumor resection went very well, um, and I was able to resect the majority of the tumor. Once the resection is complete, then I dry the surface of the brain to make sure there's no bleeding. I then close the covering of the brain by sewing it back together. We put the bone back on and plated in place using little micro plates and screws. And so that maintains the exact contour of the skull. So the skull will look exactly the same as before surgery. That procedure of taking the skull off and putting it back on is called a craniotomy. And then after that, I sewed the scalp back together and we put staples in the scalp to reinforce the incision. And then obviously we put a sterile bandage over that. The surgery itself took about three to three and a half hours to do. Um, the anesthesiologist said there were no problems from their perspective and there were no problems from my perspective. The most anxiety producing part of the case is actually after surgery when I'm go going to check on the patient. Um, I let her wake up from anesthesia and I wanted to check her strength on the left side of her body. Remember the right side of the brain controls the strength on the left side of the body. If I injured her, uh, or hurt her motor cortex, then she wouldn't be moving her arm or leg potentially. So when I went into the recovery room, she was awake and talking to me. She thanked me for doing her surgery and she easily lifted up her left arm and left leg so she had no deficits that I could see. From the recovery room, the patient will go to the intensive care unit where she'll spend one to two nights depending on how she's doing. So I hope this has given you a glimpse into my world of how I go about resecting a brain tumor and what the steps involved are. Um, if you guys like this content, please follow me. Um, I'm on most platforms and also we have a, a newsletter. If you click on the um, link in my bio, you can subscribe to our newsletter. Thanks.